Good afternoon and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We are back with the next segment of the Fans Team of the Year. And we're going to go on to the Strikers, the final two positions. Yeah. Um, we'll start off with Harry Kane. 29 goals and 30 appearances. Took the golden boot off Romelu Lukaku with seven goals in his last two games. Yeah, some... been exceptional end to the season and pretty exceptional season in general for who is the best striker in the league. Yeah, it's it's, it's a sensational going two hat tricks in the last two games. I know he's got seven, but yeah, put some six six Premier League hat tricks on level with Suarez now. Yeah, um, in terms of that, some incredible goal scoring feat, and he's also dragging the team, tr- the team through the, at the end of the season. Like everyone wanted him to score to get that golden boot. Yeah. Um, he's such a utility player and he's definitely a big leader at Spurs now at the minute um, do you think with Kane as well had he played obviously he's only played 30 games this year if he'd have played the extra 8 do you think that he would have um... <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah go on go on go on sorry Paul the cameraman there, so go on go on All right, go Leahy, on. come on um, yeah but if he'd have played those extra 8 games this season for Spurs that they probably would have snatched the title off Chelsea do you think he would have got them enough goals to get them over the line yeah, I'd say we, we probably would have had a, a much better chance. We've had an unfortunate season in terms of injuries across the whole team. Um, that's the difference of playing European football. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know we went out kind of early as well, but yeah, Kane, Kane did make a big difference missing him through, throughout the season. And yeah, as I said, he's a, he is a natural leader. But at the same time, Spurs, for as long as I can remember them, have been have been always having one or two strikers. We never replace a striker. We're always depending on one, and once one goes out injured, we're left strapped. And it's happened since... Berbatov and Keane was the last time I remember having a, a few backup options. Yeah, so, Jermaine Defoe and stuff there. Jermaine, the Defoe, time, Crouch, and, and you know, yeah. but other than that, no, we've, we've well, always had problems. He's a proper like, centre forward, though. I mean, he scores all yeah. sorts of goals. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, he scored, what, seven left foot goals, uh, five penalties, uh, two headers, and the rest were all with his right foot. So, I mean, and we'll be saying that he scored the last goal or in the last game of the season with uh, three of his left foot. Yeah. Three of his left foot. Yeah. I mean, he scores all types of goals, improvises in goals. So you look at that goal against uh, Chelsea in the FA Cup. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> he scores all sorts of goals, and he, he drags them through games a lot of the time. Between him and Ali, they're they're very big game players. Yeah. And so Son's helped that as well. Son's movement in around where he moves in behind and, and links in with him, opens the space. He's he loves putting the ball through through a player's legs and it, it, like using the player as a shield. Yeah. Um, he's quite a few from outside the box as well, which is which is great to see. When, Vinic- when you look at Vinicius Roy, Vinicius Roy have any from outside yeah. the box for? Um, he had one. One. Yeah, the for end of his Premier League career, if you know, I think second last ever goal from him. He scored from about eighteen point one yards yeah. out. So right on the edge <laughs> of the box, <laughs> like yeah. yeah. So now that that's that is also, also something that that really stands by. He reminds. He actually does remind me a lot, not in terms of his you know stature, and strength, and everything. He's not as bullish, but. He's very. He is actually, for all the comparisons, very similar to Alan Shearer. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Myself, yeah. yeah, he's the, and he's probably the best natural number nine that they've had since Shearer. Yeah. Um. Obviously, Wayne Rooney has been exceptional for him. He's not a number nine. Rooney's never been a, a hold up the ball type striker and win headers and flick ons and stuff like that. He's more of a footballer. Yeah, Where it's amazing how we can get a spot in the Euros as a centre forward compared to Sturridge and Rooney and all that. But we got to take free kicks day. and corners so. mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Which that, is great actually, for a fellow who's well, six I, I, one. I'm going to say this out straight now. I mean, if you bring Kane out of your team, you're mad. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's, definitely, definitely. There's 20 no, 29 goals for the team, second in the league. Um, I don't think there's much argument. What, with 20 it. goals, three yeah. seasons in a row. I'd like to compare him to our next person that we're going to talk about now, Lukaku, yeah. who is, you know, he was great during the season, but his attitude stinks. It was the same around this time last year, and he started coming out saying he's going to leave Everton, this, that, and the other, and he just went missing. Uh, as far as the way he's, you look at the difference between Kane and Lukaku is Kane plays for the shirt he'll go and he'll try and win a game himself Lukaku won't he'll just be standing there putting his hands out waving at everyone saying yeah you should be giving me the ball here this that the other. Yeah. he's like that really annoying kid that he plays on your team yeah, um, where he knows he's the best pop. player, but not even that. He's just, just he so scores petulant. goals, but like when he loses the ball, no one can say anything to him. He just reminds me of the big. Annoying, annoying striker that everyone's played with one. Yeah. So that was me. I think when I played. <laughs> that was me. Um, was I think though. I think that when you're comparing the two, as you said, with comparing the Kaki to Kane, I don't. You might argue with it, but I don't think you would be an Everton fan seeing how good he's been at times. I think Lukaku has far more talent than Harry Kane as a footballer and as a striker. I think Lukaku has all the talent in the world to be maybe the best striker in the world. I think he is genuinely that good, but his attitude for Everton, especially towards the end of this season, 
where the goals have dried up immensely. I think it's really let him down. I think it's probably cost him a big, big move to somewhere. I think he'll probably still go. But I don't think, to be honest, I don't think Antonio Conte is going to look at him at Chelsea and go, well, he's a, mu- well, he's a much better option than Michy Batshuayi, like, who's had a phenomenal end to the season. And I know from his time at Marseille last year, he's an exceptional striker. He'll score you a lot of goals. And is anyone willing to take the risk on Lukaku for... I, just, what, I, disagree, million? I disagree with what you're saying. I think Kane is more talented because Kane can hold up uh, a ball and has a first touch. Lukaku doesn't. Kane can. Uh, so I don't think Kane can can manage himself against four defenders. Lukaku can't. But from watching Kane mm. interviews and stuff on him, he what he like Kane now picks out things and say like when he when he went out injured, his one thing was the speed. He said he doesn't feel like he's fast enough. He needs to be faster. Yeah. And he just he just focuses and he's obsessed with improving himself on his weakest parts of the game. Yeah. He he wants to be an all round player. He doesn't just want to be, you know, the one that's scoring the goals. He wants to be contributing every way that he can for the team. So, I think he he's a drive and determination where Lukaku doesn't really have that. The Kaku does. I Probably think Lukaku wants to be the best. But he yeah. doesn't have the. Uh, Actions speak louder than words, yeah, yeah. All right? and he does too much of this yeah. and not enough of uh, scoring goals and turning up. It's big games, I think, that, that's costing the cocky. Well, people doesn't... say that, but he has scored against all the big teams. He has scored against them all. Yeah, but it's big goals is... against the big teams, he scored some goals, say, against Arsenal final game, he scores a penalty in a what, 3-1 loss. That's yeah. it, It's a goal against Arsenal, but it's not... A goal against a big team. It's not a winning goal in a game. Yeah, he very people say that okay. he scored to get the goal against City to start off the four nil. Um, yeah, okay, that's, 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 like, there's, like, there's been times where he has stepped up and he has delivered. I don't think, the other game against City as well, we went one nil up at yeah. the end. He had as well. He scored that goal. No one seems to. Everyone seems to forget that. Here I am standing up for him, even though at the moment I don't really like him. But yeah, well, he, at the same point, people say that. Without actually, what if you watch over a season and look at the teams he's played, he has turned up. In, I think it might be a thing with Everton. It's an away from home thing, not yeah. the home thing. Yeah, I think it might be Everton at home as well, or Everton as a whole. Sorry, not home. They're, Everton do shy away in big games. You think they're going to really push on, and yeah, they show the gap between yeah. between yeah. The, the top six and themselves. Yeah, well, anyway, we'll we'll move on yeah, to who for me has been the breakout player in the Premier League this year. Has been Josh King. Definitely. He's been absolutely phenomenal for Bournemouth. He's just he's a weird type of player, doesn't he? Because he's, he he's, he's not really a striker. He's more of a, he plays behind another striker, yeah. but he's not really a number ten either. He's kind of he's he actually reminds me of, and I know he's not similar in his build or anything like that. But in terms of the positions he takes up, he reminds me of Thomas Muller, in the fact that he kind of play can play off yeah, the striker, right, yeah. can play wide, and kind of drifts about just in behind and finds pockets of space to score goals. Like I think it's called a round beater <coughs> or something that. Um, Muller calls himself he's basically created a position for himself <laughs> only Muller could do that but he reminds me of that a lot but I think he suits Bournemouth's style of play down to the ground in that sense where they can have maybe a big striker like Benneke Fobe or someone just quick to kind of get in behind and the play gets stretched and all of a sudden he finds that little bit of space to find the finish mm. for a cross or from a pass in Um. I remember my Manchester United actually, my dad's a United fan, so I've had MUTV growing up just drilled into my head. Um, yeah. And when he was coming up at United, he was unbelievable in their youth team, just scoring like 30, 35 goals a season in their under 18, similar under 21s mm-hmm. team. I just never did it when he came up to it's first really team boy. football when he went to Blackburn and stuff like that. But I think he's finally come of age now and finally become the striker that. He was long touted to be. Yeah, you find a lot of that with with the young lads. The ones that are banging in the goals coming up, yeah. they generally kind of do get a bit ahead of themselves, and then they kind of have to go off and find another themselves. One United, like James else. Wilson, like another yeah. one who came through and didn't do a Frederico Makeda. Like it might be a United. Thing. Yeah, I don't know. I know you, you see it with some players like they come up and they're going to be the next big thing. And yeah, do you know what I mean? It, it gets harder obviously as, you, as it, the, the gears turn. But King has just been sensational for for Bournemouth. He, there, there's talks of him kind of on the move, maybe. I think he should have another season there and see how it goes, but just also talks to us yeah. looking at him and I'd happily take him. Um, but I don't know, I'd probably give him another season. I think he, I think he should say another season at for Bournemouth him, for himself, yeah. yeah but I, at this say with the money, the money that's been floating around. He's twenty five now. I think he's just gone twenty five this summer as well, so he's not a kid anymore. As such. No, but another yeah. year, another year, and then he can move into a big club and big move into his prime, like you know. But, yeah. Bournemouth could become a big club in that year as well, you I never know. know. I lived on the South Coast for a couple of years. Bournemouth are never going to become a big club. <laughs> Don't worry about that. They play great football. Bournemouth fans, make sure to give him stick. 
Yeah, the 10,000 yeah. you sit in your stadium every week. Come and back to me when you get 18,000 in League 2. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not like down there, is it? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> right, so <laughs> on to um, Diego, Diego Costa. Yeah, um, probably the best start first half of the season to any striker in the league. And then January came along, <laughs> China started waving little magic wands at him, lots of cash and everything. And China. he just decided that he wanted to go then, spent a lot of time, you know, around Leicester Square in China town, <laughs> lots of food and everything. Looked a little bit more out of shape. We were Donald Trump to play him over, was yeah, he? To his mates. Pretty much. But um, yeah, he's obviously just won the league with Chelsea and scored 20 goals this season, but. It's probably not been the greatest of seasons for them in retrospect. Okay, you're having a good one today, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he I, 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 he kind of tapered off in the games, and you kind of go as missing. Yeah. He's a bit of he is a bit of dirt and a bit of oof, yeah. you need out of a out of a player. I don't well. like him. Nah. I think he's an idiot. He looks like a bulldog as well. <laughs> He looks like Wreck It Ralph from uh, that, that like, Disney rotten movie. Is, isn't it? Uh, he just pisses me off. Like if I was a Chelsea fan, I'd hate to have him in my team. I just uh, like fair enough. He's won them a few games, but he just loses his head all the time. And yeah. he's just he, everyone knows how to annoy. Like just but give again, him a few nudges, and he loses. A few Chelsea fans I know love him. Yeah. They love what he does. Fair them. People well, love Suarez. Like, people love Craig Bellamy. The, 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 yeah. I mean, those players that play for your team, if you if they play for if you, they play you, for them, you love them. Yeah, but outside that, you, you kind of yeah. don't just like an idiot. Them. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, he's got a like, he's got a uh, league win the medal. My like thing is when things aren't going right from like he looks like your angry like racist grandfather. Like he just looks. I don't know about your grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> um, he just, but he does. He just looks so disinterested in things and just that he hates everyone on that pitch yeah. at that point and no one is like on his level, and I don't think that's a good vibe to be given off to the rest of the Chelsea squad really. I know they've won the league and everything. Look at those celebrations when they won the league, and I was just like, just a bit over the top. It was just weird. Yeah, there's a fire extinguisher and all that crap. We just yeah, give it a rest and go to China. He seems like he seems like that type of fella who let off a fire extinguisher. Did you see him getting in the the cart and he was driving around the train? Sounds like Paul Neal. Sounds like sounds like a fella who watches our videos and went on holidays to Portsmouth once. I'll explain after to you, Paul. It was you. <laughs> it wasn't you, don't worry. I've been to Boston before. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll, move on to, we'll, we'll move on to a better yeah, uh, better attitude. Version better of attitude, Diego bigger Costa. ego. Yeah, bigger, 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 bigger nose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Man who yeah. owns a hotel in Paris, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Zlatan, yeah. Exceptional season. Well, Nigel Zlatan. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Exceptional talent, uh, winner all his career, and, and really, I kind of thought this is going to be a tough season for him. This is probably the toughest season he was going to have, um, because coming at his age to a uh, to the probably not physical league in the world, the quickest and the quickest, yeah. he he really really did. You know, I suppose he he took a lot of people maybe by surprise. I haven't thought of his challenge and how easy he took to it. I'd love for me, you know, like from a United perspective, if they're looking at it, I'd love to see Zlatan stay next season and Mourinho adapt his. Um, formation slightly to get Rashford up front with him because yeah. I think if you had the ability to let Zlatan drop deep like he did at PSG in his final season with Cavani um, and Lucas and Di Maria kind of playing out wide as mm. well kind of playing that 10 role a he little bit he has a little bit this you year closet, you know you're funny what? you closet no. you know you're funny okay. not a closet you know what you're okay he's <laughs> yeah he has done a little bit this season the only thing that I find with Zlatan is teams have to play one way with him and yeah. that's, I think that's the reason some of United's draws for the season or that they can only play one way. It has to play through that, and he's so he is very slow, and he's not going to be the one that's going to yeah. chase you. Well, yeah, that's the thing. That's why I think you need another lad up there with him. I don't think you can play him as a single striker in the Premier League and really win a league. Yeah, I think he's can be the focal point of your entire team and your best player, but you do need lads to do the running for. Yeah, him. yeah. So we uh, need to as far as United fans get frustrated this season of of having that play to his needs. Yeah, yeah. And any ones I've spoken to that like they. They think that they play better without him. So in, in in an actual fight, I don't watch him week in week out because I'm not a United fan like, like <laughs> you, closet fan. Yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah, a lot of fans say that he he's disrupted the way they they played, and, and it's all been about him rather than the other players around him. I, I, personally, I'd like to see Martial get a run through the middle and see how he'd do. I think Martial is much better out on the, on the left, and he cuts in. He's just got that 
bend and right foot. He's still sweet, nothing. Yeah, concerned. well, he hasn't done much this season, but again, that slatan coming in and bullying everyone out of the way. If Slatan and Pogba it's, are huge, I'd have to, throw, I'd, to bring into a dressing room. Yeah. I'd have to throw uh, Rashford as a honourable mention at least. Ah, yeah, 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 he, yeah, he's yeah. still very young and very raw, but he's coming. Yeah, it's an honourable man. Yeah, yeah, no, no, he's he, got him in there. He, fairness, like we're doing this next, doing this next year. Like I no doubt, I'd say he will be in that. He'll be right in yeah, our in yeah, our, yeah. In our, in our list. People kind of would have said that last season for this year, yeah. but Mourinho didn't really yeah. bring him in till till recently. Yeah, and I think he took kind the injuries, of, I think, and I think a kind of little bit of his hype has gone away, and the kind of mainstream football thing as well. We're kind of Mbappe coming in since January as well because he's like the new golden boy. Yeah, yeah. In world football, whereas this time last year everyone was talking about Rashford, in that sense. So I think it, I think as silly as it sounds, Mbappe being as good as he is at Monaco is going to actually take a little bit of the hype away from Rashford. It's going to let him do his thing at United a little bit more. There's not going to be the stupid rumours like there was last summer of Real Madrid trying to come in for him and everything like that, which are obviously just nonsense. But they could turn a kid's head where it's like, God, I really am Definitely. right at the peak of... It's, it's Mourinho, I keep a level head on him. I yeah. think he'd be fine. He seems, I read an interview he did on, on uh, just coming up as United fan or as a, you know, in in Manchester and just growing up as a as a football fan. Yeah. He seems like he does have a very level head. The Mbappe thing definitely I think will 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 help because you know like maybe if you go back to Mashada, like he was gonna be the next big thing. Yeah. But no one really came in and took the limelight off him and then yeah, he just exactly. it's where is he now? Don't um I, I read something recently enough, but he's uh, in, is he in Malta now? <laughs> somewhere somewhere <laughs> not, too, for, not too good anyway. I think he might have signed for a team in Malta yeah. recently. But um, we'll move on to another man with you know a big ego, and that's Alexis Sanchez. Yeah, so good he's been put into this yeah. uh, nominations twice to try and fit him in. Well, he's kind of played half and half between yeah. the two positions. Yeah. He scored so many goals this season that you can't. I don't think you can leave him out of yeah. at least talking about him in the strike sense you, as well. Right now, Harry Kane and Alexis Sanchez up top. My picks. Oh, he's banging, anyway, he's banging the table. Right, right, hold on, banging hold the on. Table and everything. Someone means business here. Yeah. All the laughs today and then down to know, business. Yeah. All of a sudden, you just the laughing gas. Why, why Sanchez? His goals and assists. And if you put it here, like, in an ideal situation, and he, like this is dream worthy. You put Kane and Sanchez. As a yeah, next season, as a, as was there a real room going to There was a big room. Just yeah, put the three to one. Yeah. Three to one to go to Spurs. He was no, at one he's stage. Not gonna, oh, he's not going to go, but as a partnership, though, that. those two will be unreal. I think. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. It, it's, it's just. Uh, I think fiction, really. I think um, the big thing with Sanchez that people are mentioning, and I know you don't agree with it. I don't really agree with it that much either. Is the fact that oh, he's you know not got a good attitude towards things and everything. But to be completely honest, if you're looking at Alex Iwobi playing out on the left hand side and you're playing up front and you're looking for service and someone to provide you with goals, you'd be a bit annoyed as well, wouldn't he's you? He's a better attitude than Diego Costa. Well yeah. yeah. So I don't um, think he's a bad attitude. Yeah. I think, think he's just so passionate. Back to where we were talking about Kane and how how he's trying to develop and lead the team. He just wants to do well. He just wants he's a winner and he you know and he's that Arsenal team have struggled and he's shown through and like he has lost his head a little bit a few times but he's 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 just actually really passionate about the football. A winner and goals. What more do you want? Yeah, exactly. I think he and just. Assists. I think he's actually just at the wrong club. Yeah. I think I think he's not yeah. at a club who is matching his ambition, and I don't think that's necessarily Arsenal's fault. I think he should have known when he went there that Arsenal were, didn't have a squad that were ready to challenge for a league title when they plugged him in. Well, also Still don't. No, that's they weren't gonna also have was one there, So he was the big. No, also draw, came after. No, Erzo came before him. He came the summer before him. Yeah. Summer so before he was him. the big draw for him. To yeah, go. But yeah, I don't know if he would draw by Erzo. At the same time, if you were... At the time, Erzo was fast. Yeah, Mourinho didn't like him and stuff as well. That's another debate for another day. Yeah, but we'll move on to then the last... Honourable mention. Yeah, wouldn't be sniffing around. Here. I don't think a lad who scored 15 goals this, 15 yeah. goals this season is an honourable mention. Big goals. He ripped Arsenal apart. He's a, he's a anti-Christmas relegation scrapper striker. Is all he is. We're on Christian Benteke, but, by yeah. the way. <laughs> don't, don't even <laughs> mention him. We're on Belgian Jermaine the foul. He's another one. Another one I could be mentioned as well. Yeah. But now Benteke, I think, has been. Uh, that, that whole team under Pardew. Pardew, you only get so far out. I do like him as a manager, but with the, the freshness is, of Adelice has brought in. And he's like the new Harry Redknapp, is Alan Pardew. Is that type of manager yeah. who'll come in and put an arm around the shoulder of the players and get good results for a year, maybe. And then gone, yeah. And then it all just goes belly up. Is that like. a bit of bitterness towards Harry? No. No. No, no not really. I'd not have really. the bitterness towards Harry now, yeah. I wouldn't be. 
I think he's going to have that. That's a full <laughs> video day. Like, I go on about how listen, you're at, that listen at the same time, I was helping Birmingham got relegated to League One and he stayed just for him to have to come back to Fratton Park. But we're not talking about how he went. The, I, uh, I suppose every player needs to be the, necessarily the top of the league. But Teke is definitely done. Um, some magic stuff there. And Sel- or Crystal Palace, sorry, not Southampton, have picked up under Allardyce. Zaha has picked up as well. So. I think that in in terms of that, that's where I think you make the point that like oh he's a relegation scrapper and stuff like that and Palace have good players around him and yeah they've had Wilfred Zaha and Andros Townsend all season but I don't think you can discount Goodbye. well Goodbye. yeah Goodbye Goodbye as well. Goodbye season, was in and out of the but he's teams. a great player yeah, yeah but yeah. he's in and out of the team at the start of the season as well though I don't know if Pardew fell out with him or what but I, don't I think like him at all. I was think the influence about us. I think the influence of bringing um, Patrick van Aanholt into the team in January as well. Since he's come in, he's created a couple of goals for Benteke as well. And I like he's really liked him at uh, Sunderland too. Yeah. And he's Schulp as well. Schulp, Schulp, off, yeah. Schulp off Leicester as well. He's the less said about Schulp's game at Central, or in Central defence for him against City, the better. Though. That was absolutely horrendous. Yeah, he's, not a he's a left sided midfielder. Yeah. <laughs> Centre half. Back. Well, they're struggling there at the minute, aren't they? But yeah, but yeah, I don't necessarily agree with Benteke being a relegation scrapping player. I think he can score goals for a team fighting towards Europa League or whatever if he just gets if they play in the right sort of style from I don't think he suits a possession based style I think, he suits a, I think he suits a Sam yeah. Yeah, I think thing. Defoe deserves a little bit of a mention but it's just kind of his, it seems like his legs fell off after yeah his legs fell Christmas. off and Sunderland's wheels never actually got on this season yeah, it, it, yeah. It's, it's hard to keep up playing so well I think when you're yeah, you're, you're doing nothing at the end, and and, and uh, the little kid, the uh, Bradley Lowry yeah. as well. I'm sure that has yeah, an effect on, on, on him as well. He yeah. was out at the, the the sixth birthday the other day. The work he's doing, that kid yeah, is like s- sensational. Yeah. And and fair play, and I was leaving Sunderland in the summer and stuff as well. But he said like that he's going to continue to support the kid. Yeah, and the still k- come kids see him regardless of where he moves. Kids seem to be like his best friend now, which is yeah. which is great to see and great to see football uniting people like that as well. Yeah. It's great to see so many clubs uh, showing him. He's acknowledging it too, yeah. yeah exactly. and as far as picks, you're going with Sanchez and Harry Kane. Okay. Lukaku and Kane for me. I'm a pains to pick Romelu Lukaku because I do half agree with Paul and his attitude and everything, yeah. but I can't disagree with 25 goals. I just he's open plays the same amount of goals as Kane. Yeah, that's the thing. Like he's had Lukaku's had a phenomenal season in front of goal. Um, I would mention probably Zlatan and Josh King as the other two. I'd yeah. go to pick because I think Zlatan's been United's first Eric Cantona type striker since he left, where he's just a maverick and he's got that attitude got that towards the team. Kind he of gives, him, he well, gives him a sw- yeah, he gives him a swag. He gives him a swagger back yeah. as well. He's but, given that um, us against the world kind yeah. of thing as well. Mm. Between him and Mourinho, they've kind of you know fostered that mentality within the side. Mourinho which, tends to do that with most teams. He yeah, gets it. But yeah, I'd go same as you with Kane and Lukaku. Um, I'd like to pick someone other than Lukaku. Yeah, Lukaku's can't. mentality again. Can't I, amount of goals. You, you, you agree with it, but the goals, the, the goals is where it, where it's at really for this. You're looking at. Yeah. I just it's just the thing with, with with the difference between Kane and Lukaku is the thing that does it for me is look how much Kane was driven to finish to the end of the season to get the golden boot, whereas Lukaku didn't look bothered for it. He looked like he had his flip flops on, yeah. like Glenn right now. Uh, he looked like he had his flip flops on and, 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 and ready to go. And he looked like he, he, uh, he knew he was ready to go. Whereas yeah. with uh, Lukaku, he didn't look interested at all. Yeah. yeah, I think I think Lukaku's mentality is definitely going to to be the one that's going to turn you off. But I think Spurs again as a team were desperate not to finish the season like they did last year with the loss since Newcastle. Yeah, they wanted to have, at least come out with something. And they were dying to get that, you know, the clean sheet, the Golden Glove for Lloris and Kane. It, make, it makes them have a sense of something out of the season. So I think as a whole, the team wanted Kane to get that. And that's probably what's missing in everything as well, is a whole whole kind of team and all the Lukaku who's kind of thrown the... the, the well, it's the whole. The I'm not the contract. Yeah. It's the same as so, last season. I thought he was going to go before the Euros, to be honest with you. That's why yeah. when, he, when he was playing for Belgium, I just didn't want to see him do well at all. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway... Yeah. We'll wrap it up there and we'll be back then with a video just to, to tie the whole team together. Yeah. And that'll be the last of our, our, our fan team of the year for and 16 Don't forget 17. to vote. Yeah, make sure you leave your comments and like likes. Share in, and in, subscribe. Yeah, yeah. Get, get involved. and get in touch. subscribers plus the yeah. baby. Get We've hit the 100 subscriber mark. Um, so we're very much grateful for that. So please, please do spread along and, and like and comment and subscribe. Yeah. Thanks for watching Irish Football Fan TV. See you in the next one.